Ghostwriting is an open secret in hip hop. If you're watching this show, there's a really good chance that you know that Eminem wrote for Dre, that Jay Z wrote for Dre, that Nas wrote for Diddy, that Nas wrote for Will Smith, that Jay Electronica maybe wrote for Nas. It turns out classical music has it worse. <laughs> Mamoru Samaraguchi was considered the Japanese Beethoven. Completely deaf since the age of 35, he composed his best known works in silence. That includes his Symphony No. 1, Hiroshima, and the soundtracks for Anamushi and Resident Evil. But it was recently revealed that Samaraguchi has not written any of the works attributed to him over the last 18 years. And his ghostwriter, Takashi Nagaki, alleges that he's not even deaf. And why come out now? Olympic figure skating. Daisuke Takahashi was set to compete in the Sochi Olympics using a Samaraguchi composition. Nagaki feared for the embarrassment of a hardworking Olympian and his home country, and so he narked out Samaraguchi. Now he joins music's big list of total posers. Girl, you know it's true. Uh, oh, 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 Millie Vanilli, the high water mark of faking it. They won a Best New Artist Grammy in 1990, and by the end of the year, we all knew they weren't even the voices on their own record. So we tend to associate these kind of goofs with pop artists, or rappers who regularly employ ghostwriters. But what Samara Gucci revealed is that the suit and tie crowd is just as full of shit as anyone else. Oh look honey, there's the hors d'oeuvres. Fitz Chrysler was like the Justin Bieber of early 20th century violinists, and a huge part of his act was performing lost classics by composers like Vivaldi that he supposedly discovered while traveling through Europe. Chrysler passed off at least 16 of his own compositions as lost classics. And it goes on. A Mozart concerto was revealed as not actually a Mozart concerto in 1977. And in 1995, some guy had six of his own keyboard sonatas published as lost works of Joseph Hayden. The question obviously becomes, does this matter? I mean, does it matter at all? If you love a fake Vivaldi joint, does it matter if it's fake? If you like to jam to Girl You Know It's True, does all the behind the scenes drama really need to affect you? Do you care that Jay-Z wrote all of Dre's verses on Still DRE? Dre is busy. On the block, ladies, they pay homage, but haters say Dre fell off out. My last album was the chronic. No one expects authenticity from pop music. As an audience, we've come to accept a level of casual deception. Ashley Simpson. On a Monday, I am But hip hop is different. Authenticity is critical. And what we're willing to accept for moguls like Dre or Diddy does not go for lyricists like Nas. It was fine when he was ghostwriting for Will Smith, but people were really angry when they thought he was using ghostwriters himself later in his career. Weirdly, the closest analog is classical music. And Samara Gucci is only the newest example. <laughs> By the way, while Samara Gucci was becoming one of Japan's most infamous composers, the guy who actually wrote all of his music made $75,000 over 18 years. What do you think? Does ghostwriting diminish the value of music? Do you see a connection between the cultures of hip hop and classical music? Let us know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of This Exists every week. Also, in case you are wondering, yes, I still have love for the streets. <laughs>